Hi, I'm John Felt. Welcome to the Southeast edition of the Weekly Water Outlook. It's been pretty interesting across the Southeast U.S. recently. After a long time without any rain over the southern part of Georgia, been a lot of rain over the last couple weeks. Matter of fact, the aerial extent of drought hasn't changed a whole lot over Georgia, but the amount of exceptional drought, the D4, has gone down to zero. So we are seeing definitely some tampering down of drought over the part of Georgia that's been hit for a long time. A little bit to the west, apart, across Alabama, Mississippi, uh, there's been a scattering of flooding well into uh, parts of Georgia as well. And that brings a vulnerability to additional flooding should heavy rain occur. I think we've started that progression into the flood season already. I think we're starting to see that. I always say we ramp up with each rain event, and um, I think the next couple weeks will be very interesting. Looks like we're on a pattern where we're going to get rain every two to three days, not just this week, but next. Each one could bring us a chance of some flooding, especially next week. I'm going to be talking about these trends as I think they really could make a difference in the flood potential and the drought impacts across the region in this week's edition of the Weekly Water Outlook. Well, there's really been that change uh, that I mentioned as we've gone through February so far across the southeast U.S. Matter of fact, the southeast U.S. has been the hot spot across much of the nation as far as precipitation and flooding. Now, this is the amount of rain that fell over the last seven days. Area in red is five inches or more, and if you look closely, you'll see these little streaks of purple, and that's nearing 10 inches of estimated rainfall. I think what's uh, notable, though, is look at the area in yellow, how widespread uh, that is. Um, we have a very large part of the southeast U.S. that received at least two inches of rain over the last week. And when we talk about hydrology, it's sometimes just as important the widespread nature of rainfall as is the uh, total amount of rain that occurred over a given area. Now, if we look at the percent of normal, most of the southeast U.S., with the exception of North Carolina, received above normal precipitation over the last week. Take a look at the uh, ACF River Basin, uh, the central and southern parts across the Alabama-Georgia border down into Florida. Large chunk of that river basin received well above normal precipitation, and the central and lower part of the Savannah River also received above normal precipitation. Now, if you remember in January, it was the upper reaches of these basins, the far upper savanna and the far upper regions of the ACF basin received above normal rainfall. So uh, now we're getting recharge over the central and southern parts as opposed to the northern sections. I wanted to step back and look a little bit further the past 30 days. Um, you can see it a little bit clearer what I just mentioned here. Um, it brings in the upper part of the ACF, the far upper part of the savanna received a bit more rain. But I wanted to point out the improvement of uh, soil moisture and drought improvement over the last 30 days. And I got to say now, um, also the flood potential as we're getting into the flood season and we're getting the early uh, type of flooding due to this uh, above normal and excessive rainfall. Purple is um, six times normal precipitation over the last 30 days. Now, snowfall, I was a little surprised this week. I thought snow was increasing as far as coverage, but actually um, it is uh, decreasing across the nation. This is a national perspective here. Uh, this is the current time, and you can see, even though we're getting areas with very heavy snow and blizzard conditions, it's going over pretty much the same area, so the overall aerial extent of snow is not necessarily increasing all that much. The snow over the southeast U.S. is confined to the eastern part of the Carolinas, very light amount of snow as well as the upper elevations and the higher elevations of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Now we have had some scattering of flooding. The typical climatology of flooding would say that we would get some this time of year. I don't think this is necessarily unusual for this time of year as we get into the middle part of February. Keep in mind we get in this typical progression uh, this time of year where soils start to get wetter and wetter. Um, runoff increases or is enhanced we get some scattered flooding, and then the potential for the more significant flooding is coming in March um, into April. So we're setting the stage, and we do have a scattering of locations currently, either very high flows, and that's yellow, some minor flooding, that's orange, and some more significant flooding uh, is in the areas in red, that's the moderate flooding. Now there has been some significant drought improvement. The uh, top left image is the southeast U.S., but I wanted to look at Georgia in a bit of uh, bit more detail here. Um, 
currently the D0 to D4 is 86 percent and I thought you'd see a more significant decrease there over the last three months and it was 90 percent the last three months. So I was a little surprised. I thought well that's not much of a drop. I thought we'd see more. But if you look at the D4, the more severe drought, the most extreme, the exceptional drought, three months ago that was 13 percent and now it's gone all the way down to zero. So really what we're seeing here is not so much that the drought is totally going away, but we're really putting a damper on the drought. We're ramping it down in those areas, and there's definitely been a, a sizable improvement in that region that received the heavy rain here. So even though the coverage of drought across the state of Georgia and even the southeast U.S. hasn't changed all that much, it is becoming tampered uh, down a bit. And I think I'm going to show in this briefing that we're going to have that continued improvement. And we very well could be eliminating drought uh, over large parts of this area over the next two or three weeks. This shows again the changes in drought over the last week and the last four weeks. Last week is on the left, last four weeks is on the right. Areas of green are drought improvement, and it does show those areas of improvement over parts of Alabama, central and northern Georgia as well as parts of the Western Carolinas. Quick review of the Arctic Oscillation. Uh, the Arctic Oscillation has uh, been sort of steady here uh, recently. It's forecast to dip, dip down a bit into the negative range and sort of hold there. So we're not seeing nearly as much fluctuation. I think this winter so far across the nation, it's been very much extremes in temperature. And uh, I think with this uh, more stable type Arctic Oscillation as we round out February, you probably won't see quite as much of this drastic changes in temperature. I think you'll still see it. It's the nature of the year, time of the year. Maybe not quite as much. Now, on the other hand, because we're not locking in a pattern, um, that's not going to necessarily bring a front down through the southeast U.S. and it might stall over our area and that is going to be the stage set for some significant rain over the next couple weeks. So the big picture, here's the big picture. Uh, the jet stream is forecast to dig into the southwest U.S. and then eject up into the northeast U.S. And what that's going to do over the next week to 10 days, uh, maybe even two weeks, are these pulses of energy here are going to be rotating around out of the southwest U.S. and ejecting up into the northeast U.S. Each one of these is going to bring moisture into the southeast U.S. and it's going to result in a chance of rain. We're on this cycle now of about every three to four days, a chance of rain. Some of them will be more modest, but there are going to be some that look very significant. And I think, keep in mind, the cumulative impact uh, could be very significant. Now, because that Arctic Oscillation is not going to be very strong one way or the other, I think it's going to be more of a possibility of this front to be stalled over the southeast U.S., and then each one of these pulses of energy will develop an area of low pressure and that will move northeast. It's when that area of low pressure pushes up to the northeast will be our best chances for enhanced precipitation. So I want to talk about vulnerabilities here. I've overlaid um, over the last week the area of above normal precipitation with flooding and I think that corresponds fairly close to the axis of a heightened vulnerability for flooding. That's going to extend from a small part of Mississippi, generally parts of central and southern Alabama, and through the central part, and I'm going to include into trending up to the northern part of Georgia into a very small part of South Carolina. I think the vulnerabilities drop off significantly in the Carolinas or North Carolina and Virginia, and definitely there's a strong gradient where that drought persists around Jacksonville and across uh, much of Florida. So keep in mind that area is prime towards enhanced runoff and the potential for future flooding. So I mentioned the cumulative impact of these pulses of energy uh, pushing through. Um, like I said, some will be stronger. Looks like the first one will arrive towards the middle of this week, maybe Tuesday. Another one later this week, Friday and Saturday. Another one early next week, Monday and Tuesday, and one late next, next week. So over the next two weeks, most likely two systems. Um, I think the more modest rain will be the one coming early this week. The ones more significant will be uh, early next week, early next Monday and Tuesday, the 25th and 26th. But again, four rain events, and this is the cumulative rainfall 
um, sizable amounts of rain over Alabama, and I think that will result in uh, additional flooding and more widespread flooding over parts of Mississippi and Alabama into parts of uh, Georgia. So trends and threats, I want to put a um, trend alert out here for heavy rain and potential flooding uh, for the rest of this month into early March. This axis can definitely change. It can slide a bit further north and slide a bit further south. But um, keep in mind that these, these axis of rainfall, sometimes once they set up, they stay in one area for a while. We, for quite a while, we never thought we'd see one in this area. It was very dry earlier, uh, late last year and early this year. Right now, this is, looks like the action spot uh, as we get into the latter part of winter, uh, maybe even early spring. So uh, things can change very quickly. So the takeaway points from this week's briefing, an active period expected over the southeast U.S., a rain event every three to four days through the end of the month. This will be providing drought relief for parts of Georgia, but as well, it will be producing a flood potential threat over parts of Mississippi, Alabama, as well as parts of Georgia. Thank you for listening to this week's Outlook. I'll probably be issuing some blogs throughout the week, providing updates on this situation. Again, thank you for listening.